Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Jen. Welcome to those of you who are gathered online. Special welcome to Pastor Jordan Harris, who is here in the congregation. He is speaking between our services today for the RIC team. So welcome to Pastor Harris. I invite you to stand as you're able as together we sing our gathering hymn number 392 in your red hymnal.
the name of God, the Creator, Savior, and Spirit. Amen. In the waters of baptism, we receive God's love and forgiveness and are forever connected to Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. At the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the waters, your word calling out into the deep and creating everything there is. Your spirit continues to move through the story of your people, crossing the Red Sea with Moses and the Israelites, delivering them into safety, sweeping across the lands in the great flood, making way for a new beginning when all seemed lost, washing over us in the waters of baptism, making us new. In these waters, we hear God proclaim, you are my beloved, and that is our truth forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, after your death and resurrection, you sent your followers into the world to proclaim your resurrection to the entire world. Send us into the world to bear witness to all you have done in our lives. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The reading this morning is from the book of Acts. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerning everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, James' son. All were united in their devotion of prayer along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll invite the children to come forward, and uh, Mrs. Yannicki will share a children's message. <gasps> Who's here today? Oh, Zoe, I'm so happy to see you this morning. <gasps> Come on down. Hey. Hey, Chase. Hey, guys. So how's it going? Good? Yeah? Hi. How are you? So I don't have a really cool box like Pastor Jen, so, but I did find a bag. 
And so who wants to look in there and tell me what's in there? Pull stuff out. Go ahead, Zoe. What's in there? <gasps> what did your dinosaur find today? What's in there? Ooh, a couple pieces of paper. Hmm, what else is in there? <gasps> what is that? Do you want to look in there and see if there's anything else? Hmm. <gasps> hey, Chase. Whoa, what do we got here? What, what, it, what, what is that thingy? Oh, no. What are these things? You don't know? What do you think, Chase? Keychains. They're keychains. What's on the keychain? It's some kind of snail, caterpillar. What's on the, what's on the, um, on the pictures? <gasps> what's on the pictures? What does that say? Embrace. Embrace change. And what's this? A butterfly. Do you know where a butterfly comes from? A caterpillar. A caterpillar. Do you know that the caterpillar has to go through a lot of work and a lot of change? Do you know how it works? Can you tell me? Do you know? You know, but you forget? That's okay, because I forget stuff all the time. So what happens is the little caterpillar, right, makes this thing. This is a big word. Do you know, remember what this is called? Uh, a chrysalis. A chrysalis. A chrysalis. That's a big word. That's fun to say, too. <laughs> and, then, and then over time, right, out comes a... A butterfly. So what do you think that has to do with anything? Do we stay the way we are? No. no. Do you, do you, does your hockey game, Chase, does it stay the way it is? No. No. Do you get better if you practice? Yeah. And things change over time? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus, in the story we read today, um, he was, things were changing, right? Because we just went through Easter. And before that was Palm Sunday. Then we got Easter. Then he was there. Whoa, oh my gosh, he's alive. Now he's around talking to everybody and things are changing. Do you think it was scary? Yeah. yeah. Can change be scary sometimes? Yeah. But do you know what's really cool about change? Change can also bring really awesome and wonderful things. And you know what's even better about change? Jesus is always with you, always with you. Every time you go through something hard or something easy or something a little tough, whether it's a game or a test or choosing which stuffy to bring with us this morning, right? So we're going to be happy and thankful that Jesus is always with us through every beautiful change that we have to go through. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it in Sunday school today. Can we fold our hands and we'll say a short prayer? Say, thank you, Jesus, so much for being here today. Thank you for being all with us. And thank you for always being with us through all the changes that are yet to come, that we've been through, and that we are in right now. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Good job. Okay, we're going to go in the fellowship hall. Okay? I invite us to stand as we sing the second verse of number 376 in your red hymnals.
Gospel according to Mark. He called for the twelve and sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick, no bread, no bags, and no money in their belts. He told them to wear sandals, but not to put on two shirts. He said, whatever house you enter, remain there until you leave that place. If a place doesn't welcome you or listen to you, as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should change their hearts and lives. They cast out many demons, and they anointed many sick people with olive oil and healed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. I'm doing this sermon this morning. Um, (laughs) I want everyone to think of a time that you left your comfort zone. The last time you left your comfort zone. How did you guys feel about it? How did you feel after it? Did you feel rewarded? Did you feel like maybe it wasn't worth the trouble? Did you just feel relieved that it was over? By the way, I don't see this sermon as not worth the trouble. I'm glad to be here. (laughs) I want to make that clear. I'm not dropping hints. (laughs) In our uh, reading today, Jesus has come back from the dead, and he is telling the disciples that they will soon be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they ask, Jesus, is now the time that you will restore the kingdom of Israel? They are tired of being the little guys. They are tired of being pushed around, of being at the mercy of whoever is in charge, be it a pharaoh, be it an emperor. They want what they think is theirs. And what does Jesus say? Who's to say? Don't worry about it. That's up to God. No use thinking about that. No use asking me. Just wait and see. In the meantime, go. Go out into the world and be my witnesses. Not what they were expecting to hear from their Messiah, come back from the dead. There comes a time in all of our lives when we have to leave what's comfortable and we have to do the unexpected. For kids, that involves growing up and at a time or at some point in their lives, it's no longer a clear-cut path where they have teachers or advisors telling them, you got to do this test next, you got to do this grade next, you got to go to this school next. At some point, it's not as simple as A, B, C. It's go and figure it out. Make your own, make your own pathway, and it's okay if you mess up along the way. When I was a senior in high school, back at my old home church, I gave the children's message for our own youth service. And I talked about how our lives were kind of like a never-ending folded-up map. How every time we reach the fold of a map, God unfolds it for us, and something completely new is waiting for us, even if we don't know what's there, even when it's scary. Sometimes those unexpected things are, I don't know, an unexpected job. Uh, Say halfway across the country. (laughs) For those of you who don't know, uh, I moved here from the Midwest a year ago. I did not think I would be living in Massachusetts uh, with a youth ministry position here. And I am so thankful that I took that step. (laughs) That's good. That would be very awkward otherwise. (laughs) This congregation has been a gift, not only to me, but to my partner, Jewel, We, this has been so genuine and so welcoming, and we have loved getting to be here, and I have loved getting to know so many of you people and so many of your youth, and I can't wait to get to know more of you, even if I forget your names, because I am bad at that. (laughs) Yesterday, uh, the Bell Choir went to the Massachusetts Bell Festival, and we got to play this incredible piece. Uh, We played it for church once called Transitions of the Heart. Uh, It was my personal favorite piece that uh, we played. And I want to read a part from the story that the composer wrote. 
Um, for a little background, uh, this was composed in honor of two transgender siblings by their parents uh, in early 2021. Oh my gosh, I gotta find it now. <laughs> the opening melody is the happiness of childhood, gentle, playful. A very noticeably out of place G natural chime indicating the first moments that something is wrong. There are moments of frustration and confusion through harsh and intense chords. Confusion turns to anger, frustration, and fear. Fear of being bullied, Fear of violence, fear of using the restroom, fear, frustration at the lack of understanding and empathy, frustration at the lack of acceptance, frustration at prayers unanswered, anger at the world. Why is the world so unjust? Why does this journey have to be so very difficult? But eventually, there is resolution and strength in coming prior to transition to the happiness of acceptance of family and friends and the joy of living authentically. Being able to play this piece, knowing the background, was an incredibly powerful moment for myself. It was incredible being able to play a tribute to those whose very comfort zone, they didn't even leave their comfort zone, their comfort zone transformed around them into something uncomfortable. Can you imagine that? Waking up or slowly the world around you not being what it was, your very life, your very identity, not feeling as secure as it once was. And that is a journey that so many people have to make. And thankfully, a lot of them, they eventually have the gift of being able to find out who they truly are, who God, made them to be, and hopefully with the acceptance of the people they love most in their life. I get that it's hard to leave the comfortable. It's really easy to stay in our homes, to stay in our church, to stay in these super comfy pews. Um, but even when it's hard, God calls us to do it. And even though it's hard, it is incredibly rewarding, the gifts we find along the way of leaving what's known, of leaving what's comfortable for the uncomfortable. So I challenge all of us to look for that step that God is calling us to bring us out of our comfort zone. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I invite you to stand as together we sing, I love to tell the story, number 661 in the red hymnal.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism in the face of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you draw near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed, and we witness to your love. God of grace, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to fear to live in, may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially for Rita, Phil, Renita, Chris, Amy, Ken and Ed. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, youth directors, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the concerns and celebrations named by this community today, we pray for all those who will be traveling to see the eclipse tomorrow and that everyone remembers to wear proper eye protection. <laughs> Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of God's peace.
this time, our acolyte will pass our offering plate. So as we receive our financial offerings, we will also receive a musical offering. Please stand as you're able. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witness in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. you are before all things you are beyond all things and in the midst of all things and all peoples you have made yourself known in Jesus of Nazareth in compassion for the outcast forgiveness for the fallen hope for the poor and hungry in his life poured out for others and broken in rejection and disdain you have made yourself known on his last night with them Jesus gathered with his friends around the dinner table in beloved community. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to each one of them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup of wine and said, this cup is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Come to us, spirit of our Lord of love, and let the bread and wine before us bear your life to our life. Nourish us with his vision of hope and unite us in one body of peace. You are our life. You are our hope. You are our peace. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, and all is ready. All who approach with open hands and open hearts are welcome to receive the gift of grace and forgiveness of Christ, present in this bread and wine. You may be seated. For those of you at home, please hear these words for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of us here in person, we'll be directed forward by our usher to either stand or kneel around the communion table. I will place a wafer into your hand, and I also have gluten-free wafers, if that is your preference. And then we have a tray that has red grape juice or white wine. You may take a cup and consume it before placing it into the empty tray and returning to your seat. Come to the table. All are welcome.
please stand as you're able. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 548 in your red hymnals. First of all, thank you, Jacob. We are glad you are here. <laughs> and thank you also to Samantha Prindeville. Always a pleasure to have you with us today. <laughs> I believe Caroline wants to say something, and so we'll, we'll listen from the back there. For 
for those of you at home, Caroline is talking about a wonderful opportunity and a need to help behind the scenes. Not everybody likes to speak publicly. I don't know about that. But, um, but altar care, we're having a special gathering in two weeks on Saturday, the 20th at 10 o'clock. If you're interested to learn more. Did you want to announce about the? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As you, many of you know, I am Nicholas Thompson. I am the co-chair of our Reconciling in Christ Committee here at Faith. I do not casually throw the word blessed around, but I can say that we are blessed to be joined by Pastor Jordan Harris of Connections Methodist Church of Somerville, I believe, yes. to be our speaker today. Um, our prompt to him addresses what has been something of a blind spot for us all, in a way. Um, the current relationship between um, the LGBT community and wider Christendom. We live in something of what I tongue-in-cheek call a post-gay utopia here. <laughs> and many, many of us end up assuming that the rest of the world looks like us. And it doesn't. It is a very different world out there that can get extraordinarily dark when it comes to referencing the queer community. And so I am very, very thankful to have Pastor Jordan join us today. Um, so we have, as usual, the hors d'oeuvres and whatnot. <laughs> so please, if there is, if you're on the fence about being able to attend, I believe today will be worth the effort to come along. Please join us as quickly as you can. And I hope to see you all in the Sunday School room shortly. Thank you. And I just want to also say the belt Bell spring ring yesterday was amazing. We can be so proud of Abby Shoppy, who was in charge of the region. And so she spoke and introduced everybody. And the amazing music to hear choirs from all around was wonderful. And Linda has an announcement. So thank, and there are so many people to thank, right? So, yeah, a lot of work goes into the service planning for, for months on end, so, so thank you for that. Yeah, Lynn. Wonderful, wonderful. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God.